So you might have seen this video that went viral this week of this quadruped robot or robotic dog playing with real dogs in India. The robot dog that you can see in this video is made by a Pune-based AI robotics startup Mux Robotics, and the robot dog is called Guardio. But as much as this company has received praise for their innovation, there's also some people who are criticizing them and calling Guardio a copy of Boston Dynamics. Now, here at Backstage with Millionaires, we are all for innovation, especially in the hardware space, but we did want to make sure that Guardio was actually being made by this company, and they weren't just taking a design off the shelf from some other company and putting their name on it, calling it their design. And that's exactly what this person on X had criticized Mux Robotics of doing. And you can check out for yourself this robot, Unitree's Go2, and see for yourself. You can make that comparison on your own. But if you go to Mux Robotics company website, the first First thing that you'll notice is the statement, we design and manufacture AI-powered general purpose robots. According to the company website, Guardio is powered by Mux B1 AGI NPU, which basically is the brain of the robot, which is responsible for its vision, listening, self-learning, and understanding natural language, basically making their robots completely autonomous. Also, it's worth keeping in mind here that Guardio isn't actually the only robot that Mux Robotics has built. They are in the business of making robots for their clients, so they've also made a movable assistant robotic system, this autonomous package mover for moving stuff around warehouses, and this robotic precision arm. In fact, they've also launched a new series of robots called Spatio, which are being designed to perform tasks in space, from lab testing to exploration. Okay, I'm recording this segment of the audio at a separate time from the rest of the video, a little bit later on Friday evening, which is soon before this news video is supposed to go live because I actually have an update for you guys on Mux Robotics. I was able to get in touch with the founder of the company, Mokesh Bungar, and he told me that he's been testing and researching his AI-based operating system on robots that he built himself, but those robots weren't really good enough to apply that research. And so what he did was import an open source robot dog to connect to his AI-based operating system to make sure that everything was working fine. So basically what this is, this viral video of his robot playing with the dogs, this is basically a test demonstration of his operating system, not the hardware that he's built himself. And that learning, though, has been huge for Mokesh. Just being able to test his operating system on this robotic dog has been really important and meaningful for him. After testing this robot dog, he's also going to be building a humanoid robot for the Moon and Mars missions, which Mukesh tells me is going to be 100% indigenous, the operating system, but also the hardware, the actual robot itself. Now, even though the hardware of this robotic dog isn't being built by Mux Robotics, I think what they're doing is incredible, and this is a great place to start for any hardware company. Use other people's hardware to start off with, and then eventually, once you're able to start generating revenue and you can start start funding your R&D into more ambitious projects, then you can work on building the hardware yourself in-house. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what they're able to do with this indigenous humanoid robot as well. All right, next up in the news, Zomato's founder and CEO, Dipinder Goyal, took to X this week to announce Zomato's latest feature, Pure Veg Mode. Now, what exactly is pure veg mode? Well, India does have the world's largest percentage of vegetarians who are especially particular about how their food is cooked and who handles it. So once a user selects this pure veg mode, they will only be shown restaurants that serve just vegetarian food. And on top of that, their delivery will be handled by a fleet that only delivers vegetarian food. Now, initially, when Dipinder made this announcement, the two delivery fleets were actually going to be denoted by different colors. The pure veg fleet would have green colored clothing and the regular delivery fleet with traditional Zomato red color. But eventually, the Pindra decided to undo this decision the very next day and instead keep the color for both fleets red. Why? Well, as you can probably guess, a lot of people were concerned that societies would actually start objecting to Zomato's delivery partners carrying non-veg food items into the society, especially on special days, and this might cause harm to their delivery partners and would also be frustrating for customers that were trying to order non-veg food. So to make sure that none of this would affect their operations, they've decided to do away with this color segregation on the ground. But in spite of this, this decision to introduce pure veg mode has actually been pretty controversial for Zomato. 
I've seen some chatter online of people saying that this is a cast disc move. Other people are welcoming the decision because it allows people who only prefer to order food from pure veg restaurants the ability to do so. But I think from Zomato's perspective, this is just business. At the end of the day, Zomato has kind of reached this threshold in India where a lot of the people who would be using the platform are using the platform. And anyone else who doesn't want to is using Swiggy or not ordering food online. So it's a pretty saturated market and they are a public company though. So they need to keep making money. Their stock price depends on this. So they were able to find this untapped market, this new opportunity, and they decided to cater to these people in the hopes of increasing their user base. And as a former vegan myself who did actually care quite a lot about how food was prepared, I can totally see how this makes a lot of sense from a business standpoint and from a customer standpoint for people who genuinely care about where the food is prepared, the fact that it's not being made in a kitchen with other meat products, that it's not being handled by people who are carrying other meat products. I get it personally, but I'd love to know your thoughts on Zobato's decision to introduce this pure veg mode in a comment down below. All right, next up, I wanna to talk to you guys about Odoo, a business management software that lets entrepreneurs focus on growing their business while Odoo takes care of day-to-day -day management by offering them 70 applications covering everything from accounting to manufacturing. And I just wanna focus on one of these for now to show you how powerful Odoo is, their e-commerce website builder. So as a small business, if you don't have a website, you're missing out on a $100 billion e-commerce opportunity in India. But the reality is that a lot of small businesses don't have websites because it's just too complicated for them to set up and they don't really have the technical know-how to do it. And that is exactly why Odoo is offering their e-commerce builder, which makes creating your own online store as simple as dragging and dropping. All you have to do is choose your business type and what you want to do with your website, add your company logo to make a color palette, or choose a pre-made palette and you can choose pricing if you plan to sell online. And finally, you pick a theme and voila, your online shop is ready to be customized. And it's really that easy. There's no complicated coding required. And in fact, you can build your own e-commerce store without paying a single rupee since their first application is free for life. And yes, on top of that, you also get unlimited hosting and support from them and a custom domain free for one year. So if this is something you'd be interested in, you can find a link to Odoo's website in the description and also in the pinned comment down below. And thanks to Odoo for sponsoring this video. All right, next up in the news, just a quick update on this. So last week, you might remember that the government of India sent out an advisory that asked significant tech companies to seek permission from the government before deploying their AI models in India. And this move was criticized by a lot of people from entrepreneurs to investors. And it looks like the government has actually taken the concerns of these AI entrepreneurs into account and decided to undo this decision. So what does this mean? Well, basically nothing's changed. Companies don't need to take any permission the way that they used to not have to take any permission from the government before rolling out their AI models, but they're still advised to label content generated through AI models as under tested or unreliable so that users are aware of these unreliability issues. All right, next up in the news, a quick update on third wave coffee. So the co-founder and CEO of the company, Sushant Goyal, has decided to step down from his position as CEO to become a board member, leaving the reins of the company to Rajat Lutra. And this is a pretty huge development for the company because Third Wave Coffee is directly competing with Starbucks in India and they're actually doing a pretty amazing job of this. So Starbucks was sitting at a solid revenue of 1,087 crore rupees in FY23, while Third Wave Coffee only made 75 crore rupees in FY23, but now they're already doing annual revenue run rate of 300 crore rupees. And the thing is, Rajat might just be the guy to take Third Wave Coffee past Starbucks. He's been in the QSR industry for almost 30 30 years now, and 12 of these years were spent scaling KFC in India and Nepal as its CEO. And just to give you guys some perspective here, under Rajat's leadership, KFC did annual revenue of 1,450 crore rupees in India in FY23. So do you think that Rajat could help third wave coffee beat Starbucks in India? Leave a comment down below. All right, next up in the news, you might remember from 2023, Indian autonomous vehicle maker Minus Zero, and you're probably wondering what happened to them? Well, they've already demonstrated their autonomous technology by making India's first autonomous vehicle called Z-Pod, but now they've partnered with India's second largest commercial vehicle manufacturer Ashok Leyland to use their technology platform to build autonomous trucking solutions. Now, for the time being, these trucking solutions are going to be limited to ports, factories, and campus operations. But in the future, they're planning on making long-haul autonomous trucking solutions. However, this is going to depend, of course, on Indian regulations around autonomous vehicles allowing them to do this. But of course, this 
is still a huge win for Minus Zero and autonomous vehicle development in India in general. And we actually did a podcast with Gagandeep Rihal. He's one of the founders of Minus Zero. And you can find that video in the top right corner of your screen. I really think you'll enjoy that conversation to learn more about the story of this amazing company. All right, now let's move into some funding news. Indian startups raised a total of $215 million this week, which is slightly higher than last week's $199 million. And let's take a look at some of the companies that raised funds this week. So first of all, we have Gurugram-based audio streaming platform Pocket FM. They raised $103 million in their Series D round, valuing them at $750 million. And that's not the crazy part. Pocket FM started its journey focusing on Indian language content, basically audio series, audio books, and podcasts. And it's surprising to learn now that Pocket FM has reached an annual revenue run rate of $150 million. And $100 million of this is actually coming from the U.S. market alone. All right, after that, we have Bengaluru-based health tech startup Ultra Human, which makes smart rings that let you track your metabolic health. And they raised $35 million in their Series B round, which was a mix of both equity and debt. Next, we have Dilly-based beauty and personal care-focused e-commerce platform, The Good Glam Group, and they raised $30 million. And then following that, we have Bengaluru-based B2B e-commerce platform, Jumbo Tail, raising $18.2 million in their Series C round. Then we have Hyderabad-based gaming studio Liquid Nitro Games. They raised $5.25 million in their seed round. And then after that, we have Bengaluru-based AI music creation platform Beethoven.ai, which lets you create music simply by writing a prompt and specifying the type of music that you want. And then it creates it just like ChatGPT. They raised $1.3 million in their pre-series A round. And then finally, we have Bengaluru-based child-focused audio content platform Vobble. You might have seen them on Shark Tank India season three. They raised $1 million in their seed round. Now, now before I let you guys go, I want you to check out the video that we made about how Adam Berg created a 1,000 crore rupee company by selling just fans. And you can find a link to that case study in the top right corner of your screen. But either way, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.